Boom. There we go. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, DJ, should I call you? Yeah, DJ is good. Okay, awesome. I never, you know, you got two initials. I don't know. Some people go by the middle. One of my good friends goes by Trent. His real name's Greg, and uh, we know another Greg, so we always just call him Trent. And uh, anytime we refer to him, we refer to him as Skinny Greg, and he hates that. I love that. I think we should all have code names, you know, code. <laughs> code like names. when we're kids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like a lot of people start off with just their last name until you get to the point where like you're going to hang out with them. They have siblings or you're going to their house and then you start to say their last name and their whole family's like, why? Like what's going on? Like everybody responds to that. I like going just one letter. Like if someone's yeah. name starts with a D, I'm just going D. Because I'm horrible with names. Yeah. Um, be a lot simpler. Maybe numbers, you know. Numbers. So so <laughs> what's your uh what's your favorite superhero? I'm gonna go with um I guess type of superhero, Jedi. Mm. Jedi. Jedi. Ooh. You know, I've never heard that answer and I love it. That is awesome. Cause you got the whole it's all encompassing. It's almost like, ah oh, man. It's yeah, you people are usually expecting to hear like a Marvel or DC or comic book, but do Jedi Knight that that tops it for me. Man. They're badass, they are, and they have the mind. It's the mind, and it's I think what's sexy about it for a lot of people, like Star Wars people, yeah. is the culture behind um, you know, the the order of the Jedi Knight and how it's kind of it's yeah. almost like a religion and all that other honor and stuff behind it. You know, just like the samurai had their code. Totally. Uh, I think it's it's appealing. Yeah. Yeah. At least the Jedis don't commit sabuku. That would be interesting. W with a lightsaber? Yeah. <laughs> it would be a lot, a lot better than a, than a sword, I bet. Yeah. Well, who knows? They might survive for a bit because it cauterized. Like, I had to think, and I, I've always <laughs> thought this. Isn't it You really thought about this. It's cauterizing the wound as they're doing something. So, like, at least it's sanitary. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. you're not going to die from infection. Yeah, it's not like some or dirty maybe sword. Would. Yeah, you never know. Those conditions still didn't look that great. We should, uh, yeah, have a study on this. <laughs> Lightsaber wounds. So, so DJ, how did you get started in all the fitness stuff? Because now, looking at your Instagram, looking at the way that you uh, you almost advocate being a real person when it comes to fitness like trying things out having fun with it not focusing too much on like oh is this the proper form is this everything that i need to do but more so like actually having this practical application of hey this is how you move this is how you should be moving why don't you go try some things out what was the evolution of that journey yeah well i i mean i used to be that person who was the form nazi that the technique specialist guy yeah um, yeah, so I, I mean, I've been training for over 10 years and man, I started off at a park, uh, <laughs> charging like five bucks a head, <laughs> doing, working with athletes. And then I kind of, uh, started working with high schools, did some strength and conditioning programs with club teams, was at a, um, athletic training facility. Um, and then at some point I kind of got into the commercial global mm -hmm. gym setting um then went off on my own but as far as like it's funny what i've been teaching yeah if i'm ever bashing anything yeah it's kind of how i used to be totally you know um and i'm like making fun of it because yeah that that used to be me and it's what they they teach us when you go for education or oh, a yeah. system or someone who's selling the way to fix people or be the best um you kind of get that right and wrong black and white yeah. um because it's easier to sell and you know you get people behind it when you do that exactly but um you know they're all tools and and like i say it's all about intent and context but yeah people get caught in these um dogmas yes uh, in different fields it's, it's like teams it's like religions pretty much uh, you know yeah you got the kettlebell and, and there's even different even within kettlebells so it's so funny yeah. rkc and all these other ones strong first and yeah olympic lifting crossfit everyone's got an arbitrary mode of moving <laughs> yep seriously Which, it's almost like yeah. when you put a name on it well i i've actually i've read a bit about like words 
and uh, uh, when you bring words into society or you name something, like let's talk about like the pharmaceutical industry for a minute. The more that you can name some like 10 symptoms and you call it a disease, the easier it is to then produce something which takes care of that disease. But I feel like that happens over and over again with all these different things. And of course, everybody wants their own personal brand. Everybody wants to like do something which blows up. And then they're like, this is the only way, these three exercises are the only way that your biceps will ever grow. Don't even think about any other ones. But it's, it's that, I, I feel like the more that we get into, we get away from like these more all encompassing words and we go to the specialization. That's exactly what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just, I've been trying to get away from the words a lot because they, they carry so much movement baggage behind mm -hmm. them. Like neurologically when, when someone pictures you say squat or deadlift, there's a cultural imprint of what they think that means in their head. And a lot of times it gets in the way of just interacting with your environment and completing mm -hmm. a task, which is more kind of, you know, their body knows how to do that already. And I think overthinking it is a simpler way to put it. When you, yeah. a, a good example is I had someone pick up a sandbag and I said, I want you to press it over your head. They picked it up off the ground, racked it, and then, you know, they got set, pushed through, perfect, dropped it. I was like, okay, good. Now I want you to deadlift it. They set their hips back, arched, like, went, and it was like, oh, you know, this bothers my back. I don't know if I could do it. Am I doing it right? And I was like, you just picked it up off the ground before when I told you to put it <laughs> over your head. But once I said the word deadlift, you're like, okay, now I have to pick it up a certain way. Yeah. Like, really? Do you? Or do you just need to get it off the ground? So, yeah, the more you can put make people present in their bodies and present interacting with their immediate environment yeah um i think the better it totally. just you get instant feedback when you give them a task to get done without the restrictions of do it this choreographed way yeah you well, know, uh, yeah and i feel like that's the difference between like actually getting into what flow state is or like allowing yourself to have that freedom of consciousness versus like Okay, uh, today I have this routine and every single day I have this structured routine where I'm never allowed to like play and understand and like feel who I am. It takes the I a lot out of it and not the egoic I, but the like who you are I. You yeah, know? definitely. Yeah. Um, when you, you can't get in the flow state if you're, over, if you're thinking about all these, if you're in your head, right? I yeah. mean, it's almost an automatic thing. That's why it takes some level of competency and challenge. And when you're kind of at the borders, when you go into that flow state, but um, yeah, getting stuck in your head, mm -hmm. which isn't bad to practice technique in these things, but um, these variables and qualities that you can't um, put a metric to and put on paper, like, you know, feeling and, and fun and like the flow and all these social aspects of movement yes um yeah those i think cross over to life movement in life a lot more totally it's even gym related i know because like i i had a similar experience where i started out and like oh i got into fasting and i was like this is like fasting is the best and you know that when you start fasting you're like, how far can I take fasting? And it's like, then you realize like later in life, you're like, I was literally addicted to not eating for a little bit. Like where I'm like, oh no, I'm going to take all these days. I could fast and lose so much weight next week if I just didn't do blah, blah, blah. And so I went through all those camps as well. And I do uh, kind of, I have a like structure, but I'm like, if I want to do something else, I'm going to do it because I'm not like uh, tied to the, the thing that I created, the artificial routine where I'm like, oh, I have to do this. But what I've realized is different gyms that I'll go to, when people look at me differently, I'll be like, I don't know, should I do handstands here? Or like, should I like try to like cartwheel and then do a macaco or something? Or are these people gotta be like, uh, yeah, get that guy out. And like, you know, if I'm paying like 20 bucks for a guest pass, of course, I'm going to be a little bit more uh, 
a little bit more tamed. But if I have a membership or I'm like, well, I'm just doing whatever in here, people look at you so weird. They're like, what? They're like, dude, I didn't see that on men's health. Like, eh. I mean, I feel like that's why a lot of people do it though. So they get that, um, they set themselves apart and it's something cool. Yeah, I mean, it's, you see a lot of hipster movement out there. Um, <laughs> and I'm one of those people, I love that. Like, because it's a little like boutique, like it's yeah. off mainstream and it feels good to be like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm doing a handstands in a gym. No one knows what's going on. Uh, so there's an appeal to that also. Totally. Yeah. So, okay. So then what are some of your favorite hipster movements right now? What are you playing with? Um, hipster movements. Yeah. Well, I did the, um, I was practicing hand balancing um, and I kind of got my 60 seconds freestanding yeah. and then um, I didn't know what to do then. So I, yeah. I kind of moved on. <laughs> it almost but, becomes with, with the handstand. There's like, yeah, I've been practicing the hand balancing for like two years now, two, three years. You get to a point where you're just like, you know, I'll just like do five handstands to make sure I can keep doing five handstands. Cause like, unless you're going to like really go into it, I've seen like um, gymnastics bodies, which is like, so like, you can't do this, right. like, don't do this, don't do that. Like they're very, very crazy with their hand balancing, but I've seen a lot of, uh, routines where it's like yeah like in five years you'll be able to get this one one arm handstand down and i'm like you know what i'm just gonna play with regular handstands and if i get there i get there yeah but there's so many cool places you could take that and transitions and all those other things that's a whole nother world um but yeah it, it's i feel like <laughs> when a lot of people talk about handstands they're, they're like oh it's it's like a a meditation process and you know i'm really just feeling getting in tune with my body and i'm like dude i i wanted to do that shit to look cool yeah personally (laughs) i don't know who else felt like that but that's how i feel i mean the muscle up same thing like these are things i wanted to just look cool more than anything and then after the fact you say well it's good for this and this and really functional (laughs) for that and it's like okay yeah that's why you're doing it <laughs> that's uh, yeah most people need justification for something no i'm the same i did i i got down um elsit to handstand uh back to elsit and i was like i literally just did it so i could take an instagram video like i was like i never oh you have to or i'm like here get out the phone like uh start recording let's see if i could do it and then i did it i'm like yes i knew i could do this i dude i know a girl who she's so like talented she can do all the the movement basic skills and all these things you know gymnastic yeah. skills and she like does it in the desert alone and doesn't have an instagram and i'm like why are you punishing yourself like yeah. this? <laughs> seriously i feel like there's there's a, some deep emotional thing behind it uh that you're just trying to suppress the ego so much i'm like oh man yeah. I want to take a video of you and unleash you to the world. Yeah. But <laughs> I'll put it on mine. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're like a monk. The yeah. movement monk. I mean, and I know, and so I've heard you talk a little bit before and you were actually trying to lose followers a little bit this year. I heard that was one of your yeah. goals. Um, let's dive into that a little bit. Cause I know you were building pretty quick. Um, and your content is phenomenal. So what is the mission behind losing followers? So when I would post um, something that may be controversial, I used to get a lot of hate on there (laughs) from a lot of it from the same people. So part of it was, you know, like, am I just trying to gain followers or am I building a tribe? Am I, you know, on a certain frequency Mm -hmm. with people, you know? And so part of it was just so I, ran away to people who weren't on the same page as me, which is okay if you're not, you know, there's, there's other people out there. I I don't mind. Um, but that was a big part of it. Like, I feel like I was not honing in on a specific, um, on my end too. Like, am I portraying, am I saying authentically what I think, you know, I wanted to put it all out there. And that was another thing this year. I wanted to kind of, um, just find my tribe and, totally. and whittle down who wasn't 
wasn't with me. I mean, saving time for you, saving time for me. Exactly. Um, so I think, yeah. And, and as far as business goes, I really think in Ryan Arico, if you've heard of him, he talks about this. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as trying to run a business on social media, whatever platform, it's really not about the number right? No. You could have a million, there's plenty of people with a million followers. They're not making any money. They might get sponsorships. Oh which, yeah. You know, that's not a way to make a living. Um, but if you're trying to sell something, you have to be really specific. Like this is what you're getting. This is who I am. Um, yep. and that way you're not trying to convert 1% of your 1 million. And you get, you just water it down, you know? Yeah. So Man. those are the main reasons. Yeah. Dude, I've actually been talking to a lot of people this year who are doing similar things where they're like numbers for numbers don't matter like at all because if these people aren't who one people you like like you want to like the people that are following you you don't want them to like be the ones who are like posting hate comments and stuff because then clearly like you probably wouldn't get along in real life but two they're not worth anything and like if you're just looking at like pure roi at, which is like totally not even uh, a good humanistic way to look at it. But if you're like just pure ROI, it's like you could have a hundred followers on Instagram, but if they're engaged and they want to buy stuff, like you have a full business year after year. Yeah, for real. I mean, th- those hundred could be better than, you know, 5,000 who are just following you because you put a, exactly. a cool flashy trick, which yeah. as you know, I like to do that too. But uh <laughs> See? Yeah. It's funny because a lot of the people I go, I respect and I go and learn from and, and will pay to, to get coaching from. Yeah. They, they have only, you know, a, a small amount relatively of followers, but mm-hmm. all those followers want to be a, a student and learn from them and invest time with them. So that's really what it's about. I think it, oh, you know, yeah. as far as, as far as using Instagram as a tool for business. Yeah. Oh, I would agree hundred percent. I think we need to get away from this mentality of like, I'm going to get Insta famous and then someone's going to like, I don't know. I don't know. That's the, the thing. It's no the old knows. corporate model, man. Yeah. And that doesn't work anymore. You know, no, it doesn't. Yeah. That's interesting. People are recreating the old corporate model. They're just doing it as uh, outsourcers for Instagram, basically. Yeah, exactly. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. That's interesting. So Okay, I want to transition a little bit into um, what you, your movement practices, what you're currently doing, the way that you talk about them. And I see, I saw on the sleeve of your shirt, you're wearing an FRC shirt as well. Um, And I know you love uh, FRC and the movement fundamentals behind that. What would you recommend for just like a beginner who's trying to, you know, actually be able to move around like a human should be able to? how to move like a human. Yeah. Well, going through the FRC principles, it would be, um, do you have the, um, tools and joints of a human in the first place to create those movements? So that's a big part of my training is looking at the pieces, looking at the capacity and the potential. Um, and then on the other side, kind of creating whatever you want. You know, I, I really don't tell people what to do. I don't like to on that end. Yeah. Um, but whatever you enjoy doing or whatever your specific goals are, even if it's not something, I don't, I don't know what human is. It, I think people mean like a primal movement, maybe when they say that or evolutionarily, yeah. but um, yeah, if you want to skateboard or you want to do CrossFit or whatever, find something or, or marathon running, mm-hmm. whatever you love to do, Let's use the training to um, allow you to be able to um, do that functionally, safely, with longevity, Mm -hmm. and uh, perform better. Yeah. I think one of the hardest things for me was uh, when diving into a little bit of FRC was uh, the half pigeon. Uh, Or uh, with one leg straight and one leg at 90 degrees. Is that half, half 90 degrees? I forget. And then... Uh, rotating the pe- the pelvis I just kind of I'm one of those people I know I've heard you talk about it before too where um you go through Instagram and you're like I know I'm not supposed to just try whatever I see but I'm like yeah I'll just jump into it 
And oh my God, sometimes the FRC stuff, I incorporate it a lot now because I'm like, this stuff, like at the beginning, you're like, wait, this can move this way. And then you start to do it and you're like, oh my God. And then it like, <laughs> uh, next thing you know, you're like, people are like, what is that guy doing over there? But like, you can actually move, which is like one of the most incredible things. Yeah. Was it the, the 90, 90 position? Yeah. 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 A lot of people in the FRC community, that's the thing they say is, um, don't go try and cool shit out on Instagram. Uh, I, I kind of like trying things out on Instagram. Me too. Um, I, I find good, fun things to play with good ideas. I do think it's an issue. I see a lot of trainers who, they're kind of getting their education and their programming from Instagram videos. Yeah. And then it's really like dependent on, do you know why you're doing it? Do you have reasoning behind it? Are you just trying to do yeah. fun shit for your clients? And if you are, that's okay too. It's, I don't know. Yeah. There's a, I've talked to some people in style. Style is great to mimic on Instagram. You can learn a lot about that on there, but, uh, when it comes to actually knowing how things work, Instagram isn't necessarily a school yet. Who knows? Zuckerberg might be like, okay, let's uh, line up all the people and we'll have Instagram schools. Follow all these accounts and you'll know everything you need to know. Instagram University. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. I'm going to write that down. People would pay uh, a lot for that. A lot of money for Instagram University. Well, I mean, I'm kind of, um, I don't know if you follow, uh, John Yuan. No. Um, but we actually started a, an online movement university. Yeah. I have um, seen, I've seen you post about that. Yeah. And, um, um, uh, Majestic Mirth, he's in there too, but kind of, yeah, we, we pulled it from Instagram, but what we're doing is we're featuring a lot of experts in movement in different fields and having them showcase and teach the basics for like a unit or a semester, yeah. you know, and we're, we're doing that every couple months. So I kind of along those same lines and it's been awesome. Yeah. Yeah. On your hand or on that though, you're getting these experts and you're actually having them teach their methodologies, which is awesome. So what's been going on with that? How's it been going? Uh, what, uh, what's the long-term goal for movement university, a school or like collegiate school? Oh yeah. I mean, well, who cares? Like <laughs> if we want to give out uh CEUs or whatever, I guess that'd be cool. But th who cares about that? I guess if you're like an Exos trainer or something or. Yeah. I don't um, care about that shit. Yeah. Like I'm dude, I'm not even a certified personal trainer anymore. I think I let that go a couple of years ago. So uh, <laughs> like I go out and learn what I'm interested in. Exactly. Right? What, people I want I don't go out and learn to get some um credits on a piece of paper to keep some letters behind my name yep uh, and and it, even if you are doing that do you think your clients really care like how many letters you have on your name no maybe they do I mean I might just start making some up you know? yeah <laughs> FPST you know level 10 yeah <laughs> but um Jedi number yeah, I, four. <laughs> oh, hey that'd be awesome but yeah, the, I think what we want to do uh, in the OMU is number one, create a community, right? So we have this, I, I feel like there's a group of people out there right now that don't really have a place to fit, yeah. you know, or, or they've went through all these kind of schools and groups or movement cultures or this and that, and it wasn't for them. Um, and we want to create a, a place for that and not lock them in a certain dogma or name, mm -hmm. have them, uh, you know, facilitate exploration of movement and learning and just yeah. provide a platform for that. So mm -hmm. that's our goal. And it's been, there's cool people in there. There's cool instructors. And um, I feel like we're all growing and learning together. And it's not like that martial arts uh, yeah. teacher and you're the student, you must, do the cruel tutelage for five years before yeah. you're, you know, no, we're, we're just all here to learn, you know? Yeah. Then he beats you up in front of the class, even though you're the second now just to show. Yeah. If I you're late. That. Yeah. You will get a spanking. In yeah. Front of everyone. 
Yeah, it's an interesting culture, and I love that mindset of like an actual community where like people, you know, I've I've seen um, and been in a company where we tested the holacracy idea. It doesn't necessarily work as well as people would want it to work. There just has to be you have to have like really higher consciousness, kind of like drop all ego type people, which is hard, especially when it comes to money. But when it comes to movement and learning about something, there's the experts and there's the community. But if the experts are um, in the uh, in the trenches with with the community, then everybody feels like everybody is one, and that's awesome that you guys are doing that. I agree with you, man. I think. Honestly, as far as um, most pulling in the most people at the most time, you have to make it like a, a strict um, master student. I'm, I'm going to give you all the answers and the secret if you put in the work and it's going to be you have to earn it. Yeah. Um, there, there's something sexy about that. Like, oh, I'm I'm in an uh, exclusive small group that's not easy to get into. Yeah. Um, and I put in the work and I got my black belt or whatever, but I don't know if that's sustainable, you know? Yeah. And that's so yeah, business wise, there's two ways to go about that. And I think they both have uh, a market and an appeal, totally. but one of them, I don't know, I think allows you to be a little more stress free and have more fun and yep meet cool people and sleep better at night (laughs) exactly yeah i think i always uh just relate it to being a real fucking person um because if you let business or anything take over your life that's what happens and that's hard to do that's hard to do especially we're talking about social media yep you know everyone like this is my my, people used to come at me like i don't think you should say that because um your page is your brand, you know, it's not just you. And I'm like, well, I want to make my brand just me then, you know what I mean? So that I don't have to put on one hat, watch what I say here, watch what I say here. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think people are hesitant about that. They want to make those pretty Instagram profiles with, Mm -hmm. um, you got to have the text ones on this column and like the pretty ones here. Yeah. And that's okay. But then, you know, you like we're talking about the corporate model you're yeah. falling into what the the script is that you see everyone else do and it exactly. doesn't set you apart as much so yeah i've been thinking about that too lately um yeah how can i stack my life so that what i think is fun what i tell people i love close friends and in business all kind of uh, align with each other totally yeah it's like With that, with the Instagram, it's like, if that's preventing you from posting something you want to post, it's like, what is your Instagram for? What are you doing? Well, like, I always have this conversation like business. um, And a lot of people go like, you know, but it's for the good of the business. And I'm like, but the business, business is an entity comprised of the people who work for it. It is nothing but that. So like the moment that you're like, no, it's for the good of the business. Like we're all going to suffer. What? You guys are the business. Like this is you. I don't Yeah. And, and if you're, like I said, unless you're a big corporation that doesn't really have humans running it, like you're, you're an, uh, a non-human entity with yeah. moving parts that go in and out, dude, you're, you're a person making relationships with people and connecting with people and helping yep. people. Um, and we can't forget that, you know? Yeah, we really can't. So I wanted to move into, I know, uh, you have stick mobility now. How's that going? Um, and I've seen, I've been watching that feed as well. That uh, That's pretty growing uh, good. Oh, yeah. They're working with a lot of pro teams and um, baseball, hockey, football, collegiate level. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I, it fits in with the FRC concepts. It's just a great tool um, to use. Um, if the principles are, are sound behind them. And I used to be one of those people, to be honest, like, dude, that's a gimmick. That's an overpriced uh, PVC pipe. Uh, yeah, I thought it was ridiculous. But then I got my hands on it, played with it, and I was like, oh, wow, like I see the application possible behind it. So that's actually one of my 
besides the floor and yeah. maybe um, the wall, it's my most used piece of equipment uh, with totally. clients. Well, Just you, makes everything easier. Yeah, and you got me to you start to to look at that stuff different because I remember, I think this is probably a year ago. I saw a video of you playing with one of the sticks, and you were like doing a one arm like uh, leaned out. It was opening up. Uh, I think it was opening up the top of your chest but you had a weight or something also. And I was like, I got to try that. Cause I was like, it's probably like not that hard. It looks hard. Oh my God. Like the stability and the activation of things is ridiculous with those. Yeah. I mean, you can go in pretty much any vector, any angle, any position you want. Um, and then apply force into it. Right. And, and like Dr. Andrea Ospina says, force is a language of cells. So it allows you to, just train in more vectors. Um, and there's also, I mean, you could do it with the PVC pipe or whatever you have available, mm -hmm. um, but this one you can bend and you won't shatter or break and it has the rubber grips. So yeah. I, th I think the biggest thing about it is the principles behind it. Um, yeah. And it's just a great tool to use those principles. Yeah, I mean, if uh, if you're doing one of those and then it breaks and you just slam the floor uh, with like just regular PVC pipe, I have a feeling it will turn you off from doing that for a while. I remember the first yeah. time I did a handstand on parallettes and the, the first time I fell and my face hit the ground, it strayed me away Ooh. from parallettes for a while. <laughs> oh, ouch. It was just one of those. Did you get that on video? No. And I wish I did. My buddy, like they looked over and I was like, cause they heard me hit the ground. And I was like, I like locked out my shoulders like at the top. So then I was like, I just like knew it was coming. I was, I was up like, yeah, here we go. Let's see what happens. And I like tried to like, I think I blocked the top of my face and like scuffed my cheek and like it oh. hit it. And I was like, this is, um, yeah, I might stay away from parallels for a little bit. They were super high ones too. I was just like, this is just not, it's just a good combination for me to stay away from them. It's a traumatic event. You had to, every time you saw those uh, PVC yeah. pipes. Yeah. And parallels, did you ever have yours? Like, did you make yours or were they? Um, the no, they were just having one piece. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've had a lot of experiences where I tried to make one and I didn't glue it well enough, I guess. And they'd always be like falling apart and pieces coming off so yeah there it was i had some sketchy uh times with those too yeah but man you're like king of sketch with uh all of the rocks and the different things that like i see you with the uh, mobility you're doing like basically weighted mobility half of the time where it's like these uh barbells or something with all these attachments i mean what uh what sparks that um yeah, I, I guess it looks <laughs> king of sketch. That's that's good. Hashtag uh, king of sketch. Hashtag. But um, yeah, it looks out there. But really, when we bring it back to the principles, um, if we're doing, I don't even think of mobility work as mobility anymore. It's just mm -hmm. strength training to me. Yeah. So going into these whatever positions you want to train, loading them up, applying force, getting strong in these ranges, it's just like regular strength training, but maybe in some in ranges that are out here in the periphery. I mean, we're used to seeing all the power strength work yeah. done in your most efficient space possible. But, you know, I like to do it out here because now I'm stronger there. I'm safer there. Yeah. And yeah, it, it ruffles people's feathers sometime when you see that, but it wouldn't bother anyone if you saw someone do jujitsu or wrestling. And yeah. those people are strong, right? Um, that's because in these awkward positions, they're applying force. They're, you know, tensioning fully. They're getting yeah. strong there. But you kind of see immediately, oh, there's a reason for that. Um, but to prepare yourself in the gym and create those same angles, people um, think it's dangerous or they have a hard time connecting it to being functional. But I think of it like we have all these options to go into. Yeah. I want them all to be as prepared and strong as possible. Yeah. Even if you consider it bad form, that's still a place I can go. I don't want to end up there, not training it and, and hurt myself. Exactly. Because you might be forced there eventually 
and it's not up to you. You know, you're yeah. walking down the street and something hits your leg or you don't want the only play time you go there to be yeah. the time that injures you. Right. Exactly. And I, I've heard you talk about the sacred barbell and how people get mad at you when you move it around differently as well. Dude. Yeah. That's uh that religion right there. The barbell religion. Um, yeah. It's another thing that if I were to do something with a club or a, you know, a slosh pipe or yeah. in any other scenario, people would be like, Oh, that's cool. Nice. But you do something unconventional with a barbell and the people who, you know, have been drilled in their heads, like you must keep this yeah. form neutral spine, everything. Because when they're thinking about it, they're thinking, Oh, this is the sport I do. Yep. This is, you know, and that's fine. You have to do that in your sport. But if someone else is using a man-made tool, it's, you know, what a hundred years old for something else, you got to be able to step outside and say, okay, that's a different context than totally. what I'm ramming down people's throats because of a sport. Yep. And I say sport, but let's be honest. Most trainers are saying the same thing. CrossFit, they're saying the same thing. Yeah. Um, you have to do it this way, but really it it's depends, like, right? Yeah. It's like diet, right? Cause like all these different nutritional protocols boil down to like eat more fruit, eat more veggies, like just, you know, moderation and you'll feel good and you'll be happy. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, diets, diets even crazier, man. That's uh, talking about extremism and ideology. Wow. Yeah. You can't bring up anything about nutrition at a, a dinner party or, you know, <laughs> anything no. like that it'll erupt and i've been you know, i'm oh, sorry go ahead yeah i was gonna say i don't know if you're familiar so you're familiar with keto mm -hmm. i don't know if you're familiar with ray pete no not so so he would be what i would consider the opposite of keto um and i've been on both sides he it's funny because he preaches no authoritarianism he's like i hate authoritarians and then you go into his forums and his people are like, he didn't say you could eat that. And it's so funny because they even get like, if you do one thing wrong and you're like a follower, they're on you. And I've been on all the camps until I just, every time I bounce back, I'm like, oh, moderation. Just live. Yeah. Like we said, moderation is hard to sell though. <laughs> it, and it's, it's not easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. I mean, look at something like meditation. How hard is that for people to do? Just sit with themselves for five minutes and watch their, you know, breath or their thoughts. Yeah. <clears throat> so, excuse me. Yeah, the the middle path is a hard path. It is. So, are you a big meditator? Um, I, that's one of the things if I label it meditation and start like a practice, yeah. it won't last. But, um, I've been getting into mindfulness a lot yeah. more, but I feel like if I make it into a, a ritual or practice, it's not going to be sustainable for me. Yeah. Yeah. But I and do, I do a lot of breath work and, and mindfulness stuff. Awesome. Yeah. That's, um, I'd say one of the biggest transformative things for me was like learning how to, be present but i mean you've talked about this already earlier when it was like being in your body and being able to move and do things like that is people want to say meditation is one thing or another it's uh the theta brain waves but it's like it's also just flow state and all these different abilities for you to get out of your head mm -hmm. yeah i think flow state is using um the external environment to enter into that zone Mm -hmm. and meditation mindfulness may be more doing it uh, internally mm -hmm. um, in your internal environment so i think both practices are are good and they don't have to be separate and that's yeah. the thing i got hung out hung up on was all right now it's time to meditate so i have to sit down in my spot start my timer and you know and yeah. it's really not about any of that it's just um can you 
do you have the mobility to transition and move along that spectrum of what we're talking about, the flow state and totally. mindfulness? Do you have control of that? And I yeah. think that's that's the most important part. Yeah. Yeah, there was a uh, I just recently, uh, do you know Paul Check? Yeah. He put out a contemplate uh, contemplation meditation uh, video and it, I thought it was a cool concept like when you're reading poetry to like sit there and like basically be lost in understanding of what it is and there's like a whole study in science behind like contemplating and that being a form of meditation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, can anyone even define it like honing in your focus on I I, I have no idea. Exactly. But, so um, um, I did want to transition into a few questions that are just uh, unique to height and living. Um, one of them is, do you have any higher leverage skills that you would say have helped you? Um, and these are skills that you can learn in one area that apply to multiple areas. So learning how to learn, that's a higher leverage skill because then you can learn better. Learning how to breathe properly, higher leverage skill because exercise and all of that goes better. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I would say um, moving your moving your joints through their in range of motion mm-hmm. um, every day. Uh, and we were just talking about meditation. Yeah. Just it's an awareness practice of your body's movement ability, and I think scanning that and going through that every day. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with cars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man, that, that could be used as a meditative practice, you know? And I think doing that in the morning, especially pretty much scanning your ranges. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to walk outside or brush your teeth or whatever, you'll feel yourself moving differently, feeling a little better because neurologic, you're like, I've been through all these spots now let me kind of utilize them totally and, and access them throughout the day. So that's a, I think bang for your buck. That's yeah. huge. Hell yeah. Awesome. So is there anything that you're currently questioning? And so this is, can be life, politics, religion. It's uh, something that you see a lot and you're like, I don't think it works that way. That's a good question. Yeah, there's something I'm I'm picking at right now, um, and it might contradict some of the things I've said. But um, the thought of uh, trying to be inclusive and mm-hmm. accepting and welcoming to to everyone in a a humanist in a sense, yeah. I'm questioning that mm-hmm. and thinking that having these close knit, smaller tribes that have differing opinions, different cultures, Mm -hmm. because really culture can only evolve with boundaries, right? And isolation. So I, I think you see that in like these modern times, that's going away. Right. And we're all kind of being homogenized and blended. So now I'm thinking of all these people who kind of have these rigid, boundaries and structures um that if we get away from that you know maybe there's some good that can come from that but there's a lot we're gonna lose so i'm rethinking the value of those yeah those um exclusive groups yeah it's that is an interesting thing so i like to always i'm not an apple person i don't own anything apple but apple is amazing at branding being unique through the most ununique computer like where no one is like everybody has an apple now, but they're like, be unique, buy an apple. And it's like, no, everybody has an apple. Um, and so it's that similar, like there's, but do they have the new apple product? Exactly. Not be yet. <laughs> yeah. Be unique. Buy, get on this, uh, get on the first in line and make sure that you're the first person with it. But then as soon as that one goes away, make sure to get the next one or yeah, be unique for the first two months. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. But I agree. Um, I think you have to have clear characteristics. Otherwise, like that is the whole, like, we're just going to like all blend into nothingness, which is like, I guess, depending on your view of consciousness and stuff, 
then consciousness would just be itself again and not reflecting and trying to experience anymore. But it's, you know. Yeah, nothing, nothingness is a good word. It's like, if you, if you really want to be, um, like, love the world and be humanist and accept everyone how much can you really like if you if you're like i love all people can you really yeah. love all people like yeah i almost think having a few really close intense relationships where you will like help them when they're in need and yeah. you know sacrifice for them and and there really is a bond um i think more of those close communities are mm -hmm. better than the person like trying to travel around and, and help the world because I agree. I don't know, they, how much, how intense can those connections be? You know, it's also the mindset of like, well, there's ah, this, yeah, there's like three things to unpack. Number one is the people who want to go help the world often don't realize that they're just putting their beliefs on the world, which can be very uh, bad because look at any of the major horrible things that have happened. It was the exact same thing. So good and hell's paved with good intentions. Mm. But two, it's the fact that, when you are with people that you're close to and you love and you give them good ideas, not in an enforceful way, but you're like, here, I'll help you with this, anything. That's just one thought that goes to them. Then they have other people they're close with. And then it does still get around the world, but it gets around the world in a more positive, personally connected way. Yeah. A small group of people with yeah. beliefs is, um, is dangerous yeah they could they could do some damage i'm saying it in a negative connotation but they could actually make Either an way. impact you know then yeah. then a, the lone you know cowboy who's going around um and we glorify that but it's really not um yeah. practical you know yeah. you can't affect that much change mm -hmm. and um like you said about someone going around trying to impose their values on the world it's like a lot of people don't want your help and probably don't like you. <laughs> These exactly. people you're trying to help, right? Yeah. Dude, I watched, this was one of the craziest things for me was I, it got me in such a bad mood for a few days, but I watched this documentary and it was all about like Uber and Airbnb and their roles in other uh, countries and stuff and how over there they're like, it's destroying our country. Like it's all this really bad, like the whole documentary was geared towards Silicon Valley is the devil and all these new technologies are bringing us to like the worst thing ever. And not that I agreed with the guy, but the mindset behind it, like the understanding where I was like, people in different places, like do not like, they like hate Silicon Valley. They're like, they just keep inventing new shit that like is destroying our culture and our way of life. So it was really interesting to, uh, to get that perspective. Yeah. It's, that's interesting. When you think about, what airbnb has done hotels i've only stayed at airbnbs the past like two three years <laughs> me too like they won me over and, and they've been great but yeah to see it's almost like uber and all these things is taking the the these um silos of of power and money and just dispersing mm -hmm. them to yeah. everyone else which sounds good it's unless you're one of those people um and when I say power, I mean, you could just be, have a small taxi service yeah. yourself, you know, be a mom and pop place and you're kind of, your business is threatened because now everyone could exactly. if you think about it. Yeah. Uber and Airbnb, what are they really doing except <laughs> that's providing a platform to people look on it. And then it's like, okay, so now you, do you guys want to be seen or not? Yeah. It'd be, and interesting. it's smart. It's interesting because you know, we, what we may see is Hilton and all those start to buy and put up little houses like that because that would be the most native transition. Like Starbucks. Yeah, exactly. You know? Where it's like, <laughs> like they started as a small coffee shop place, you know, and now they're, but they're on every corner. Yep. Kind of like you were talking about Apple before. Yeah. That's, um, yeah. If you can't beat them, uh, join them. Exactly. Yeah. It's going to be I'm, like marijuana pretty soon. Marble oh greens. Yeah. Seriously. That's, oh, I've had that thought forever. Um, that marble, all the cigarette companies, as soon as it's nationally legal, are going to destroy all of it. 
yeah, they are, <laughs> right? But the only, so it's inevitable, right? We can't yeah. stop that. No, uh, no, no. I'm sure some people would, but, uh, or would want to. But I always think the, the bigger that imbalance grows between, mm-hmm. you know, the, the haves and the have nots, that just opens up a space for like the boutique um, yes. marijuana farmers and the organic farm to table. Oh, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Farm to table. And uh, like we talked about hipster movement. Like, yeah. I feel like these things, even how CrossFit started, they grow from the kind of counter reaction to the, the mainstream. Yep. Um, whatever's going on. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, yeah, it's like everybody gets mad, like the 1%, the 99%, but it's like, Hey, have you ever heard of statistical models? Because there always will be a 1%. It doesn't matter how much money is in the world and is in, in circulation. There will always be a 1%. That's just the way math works. Like we'd have to change. It sounds it. better than the 18%. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's like the 80, 20. It's the same. It's all following very similar, similar graphs where it's like, you know, these things will happen, but they open a whole nother pathway that like you can help people or you could do what you want to do because now this just got open. So I do want to ask, what are you obsessed with right now? What am I, I'm kind of obsessed with as far as uh, in my training, um, torque, um, torque generation through the body. Yeah. So I've been um, really getting into well, the past two years, uh, Julian Pinau's work, now, how do you spell that? Um, J U L I E N P I N E A U. Awesome. Yeah, so he has some some interesting theories, um, and I don't I, I don't think there's a lot of like studies behind what he's saying and all these things, but yeah, you know it doesn't matter. I I want to get the felt experience. Ninety nine percent of the time, I'm disappointed, but with him. <laughs> Yeah, there's, uh, there's something there. Um, and it fits in with the FRC principles and, you yeah. know, have the active control of your body, you know, be able to move yourself. And he kind of adds in the layer right on top of that, that bridges that concept with performance. Mm. And it's more, can you create, um, can you spiral and do you have rotational power oh, and nice. options? Um, cause if we think about a joint, right. Um, yeah. so a joint can go different places, but once we add like a load or a lever on top, there's going to be some sort of rotational yeah. force. Right. And with a lot of people I work with who, um, oh shoot. No, you're good. So, the, yeah, you're good. Okay. So they, they've practice movement culture you know let's say middle splits or snatches and they've opened themselves up to these huge ranges and can do some cool things yeah um and they can get there actively but you add a little weight and their control is totally off so it seems like a missing element and uh yeah i've been really playing with it and it's made a huge difference um yeah so that's something that we talked about um being mindful so yeah. now whenever i'm doing any loaded work that's um in my mind is where is my torque what do mm-hmm. i want to generate do i have options to go both ways am i um, being pushed into a certain one or yeah. do I have the option of both so i've been exploring it and making that a priority as far as my lifts so like if I do a, a deadlift, yeah. it's no longer let me work up to the most weight I could deadlift. It's let me work up to the most weight I could deadlift while staying in this torque. Mm. And that'll be my training for the day. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep diving into that. Hell yeah. That is awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Where can people find you before we take off? Um, you guys could find me at strong camps on Instagram. Um, and all my shit's up there. Awesome. (laughs) Awesome. 
Cool. Yeah. And uh, if you're not going to follow him and like his freedom of expression, then, you know, don't follow him. That's just don't tread on me. Yeah. (laughs) Hashtag the sketch king. (laughs) I'm using that, man. That's awesome. I mean, it's yours. All right, brother. Awesome. Thanks for having me on, man. Thank you so much for coming on.